it is to the future of humanity this core idea that there can never be no place, no time, under no ideology or faith or creed, an excuse for such cruelty as that which manifests as torture. Courage, commitment, compassion, an unquenchable thirst for justice sustains the movement against torture. It's the courage of their speaking out. Justice for people like myself, it doesn't mean that it's going to bring peace, neither peace of mind, because it never can recover. Today we see it is still happening continually around the world in some other countries. And this justice is going to put pressure on other countries, so do not be repeated again. I think people can feel that there's been justice. Once everything has come together, when they see that in their country, the system that allowed them to become a victim of torture has been changed. But more than that, if they can see change coming about from their testimony, from their evidence, from their story, then there is more than just a feeling of justice. There is a feeling of, I've helped other people. I have helped to prevent other people from going through this. Revenge, it's going to put an idea in the generation to come. And they will say, revenge is the best option. No, it's not. By seeking revenge, this operation would be continued. And we are only representing a human that's always looking for revenge, always looking for war, always looking for killing. There is a thin line between uh, revenge and deterrence. What we fight for is deterrence, to deter, to stop people from repeating uh, uh, torture against other people in the future. It means bringing uh, peace to the souls that have been killed and tortured. It's, it means that like the war crimes that committed and still committing in Syria, that we are making actions against those crimes. It's not only about Syria, it's about saving humanity inside each one of us.